Hi, I'm Jens Hauser. I'm an art and media theoretician. I'm currently talking to you from my office, where I'm confined right now, as you are. I'm Heather Dewey Heifork. Antoine Bertin. Anne Gaillet. Welcome to Art and Technology. I have been working around the topic of biomediality for 20 years and especially been interested in artists who do apply biotechnological methods for making art. I'm a transdisciplinary artist, so I work in a lot of different kinds of media. And most recently, I focus on biotechnology. I make conceptual art that is considered to incorporate the biopolitics of the senses. One term that is used to refer to the sort of practice I'm working with is sound art. And I like to create what I call listening experiences. I really believe that listening to the world, whether it's bacteria, plants, animals, ecosystems, can really allow us to explore and understand the universe in unique ways. So I'm currently quarantined in Paris. With new constraints as an artist, you, you can really thrive. It's very difficult to stay inside all the time. I see my view right now, I just see the desert. I've been teaching myself more 3D animation and working on, among other things, a waltz. So it's a waltz between the coronavirus and oxytocin. Just to think about how will social distance and affection resolve themselves at the end of all of this. In response to COVID-19, I was invited to edit some pages for the art forum. And so I have tried to get on the front lines and rally my intellectual interlocutors. <laughs> and we discussed, uh, you know, this sort of breakdown of the definition of the human. We need to ask ourselves, what is this teaching us about life and death. In the context of the coronavirus, we see micro-agents having macro-effects worldwide. The notion of micro-performativity is emphasizing that particles that are much smaller than us play a crucial role in our world that we cannot see. So the hard thing about working with the virus is that it's so small. So there's nothing that you can easily just put out on display. And so a lot of what I've been doing is thinking, how can I make this almost invisible thing visible to people? I think my job as an artist is really to foreground that which we aren't necessarily uh, keenly aware of. I think that part of the reason why we are so anxious around COVID-19 is because we've been so conditioned to rely so heavily on our vision. Part of why I work with the sense of smell is because it's invisible, because it really draws on a lot of our anxieties. I think I'm the type of artist that believes that you see more with your ears than you do with your eyes. But I like to invite people around this idea of hearing the invisible. What I'm particularly excited about is how technology can hack the senses and allow you to perceive the world in a different way, create new perspectives. Accessing things you can't necessarily experience with the senses directly, you can build a, a sort of new understanding of what happens in the world. To ask, is humanity as risk, can really stress the qualities of the human species. In a way, humanity is at risk of not giving itself the time to answer some of the exciting questions that we have, existential questions. Where do we come from? Where are we? Why are we here? <laughs> As a species, we have been separating ourselves from the environment and don't have a sense anymore in how far we can apprehend this world that we are in. We are further exploring the question of whether humanity is at risk while having a closer look at the artworks in part two. We are not the most suited species biologically for Earth. You have the slightest adjustments in oxygen and gravity, and we would perish in a nanosecond. And we are very highly conscious of that now more than ever. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology. Mm -hmm.